the kind people of Egypt, which was one of the cradles of early Christianity, wish to encourage you on your spiritual journey. Throughout the history of mankind, the divine messages are often shrouded in mystery. Prophets, messiahs, or whichever names you call them, are often persecuted and oppressed, their words obscured. But how do we distinguish the true from the false? To do so, one can only rely on the divine's guidance, and the truth will reveal itself to those who earnestly seek it. In 1945, shortly before the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, 13 handwritten books were found near the town of Nag Hammadi in Upper Egypt. These texts were written by early Christians in Coptic, which was the ancient language of Egypt, in the centuries just after the time of the worshipped Lord Jesus Christ. The Nag Hammadi Library gives precious insights into the doctrines of Christ's followers before the current Christian Church and Bible came into being. The early Christians are also known as Gnostics because they emphasize the importance of Gnosis, meaning the direct personal knowledge of God for one's salvation. The Gnostic writings reveal that Gnosis involved sacred, higher teachings from Lord Jesus, which were transmitted in secret only to the worthy. Such a direct experience of the Divine, as Supreme Master Ching Hai has told us, is essential to gaining true spiritual understanding. Only the one from heaven, direct, within yourself, and... Uh, transmitted by the Master, that is the real teaching, without talking. Because you can read a thousand sutras, can read hundreds of Bibles, or any other documents, spiritual documents, would never get you anywhere. Huh? Yeah. Never, never give you the experience that you want, or the experience that is spoken of in the Holy Scriptures spoken, but nobody can help it, except by the initiation with the real Master. We forgot. Jesus Christ taught a lot of things. He taught people to be able to live, to be able to live, 救人啊不过内教不是每个人能得到 
，因为公开也没有人懂什么啊，很不容易懂的。不过，也尽量用这个外教啊，讲一些逻辑，然后让人家了解这个逻辑，然后才能够叫那个内教。这个外教是帮忙我们开我们的那边的心呐、啊，然后再用内教传下去。The Nag Hammadi Library contains a text that has come to be called "On the Origin of the World." It includes a detailed account, probably based on someone's inner visions, of how the heavens and the earth were formed, as well as the angels, demons, and humankind. Following is one of the fascinating excerpts. But actually, chaos comes from a shadow that has been called darkness. The shadow comes from something existing from the beginning. So it is obvious that something in the beginning existed before chaos came into being, and that chaos came after what was in the beginning. Wow, this description reminds us of what Supreme Master Ching Hai revealed before about the Big Bang and the origin of our universe, which is even called the Shadow Universe. The Big Bang. Is where energy seeped down from all you collided in bond, collided with coarse energy at the scene of the universe and exploded in the shadow universe. Okay, let's look at that. After the nature of the immortals was completed out of the infinite one, then a likeness called Sophia, wisdom, flowed out of Pistis. Faith, with the wish that something should come into being like the light that first existed, immediately her wish appeared as a heavenly likeness with an incomprehensible greatness. This came between the immortals and those who came into being after them, like what is above. You know, some energy, because so powerful, it seeps down past the seam of the. Original universe、ah. and manifests into different worlds, into some beings, and then some of those with so much energy and creative force within them, this just naturally, automatically created the lower worlds with their marriage, and then after that, lower beings worship the Lord Timko Tu. For a great many many aeons of time, after knowing the name of the Lord, after knowing where they came from, and then they 